Some of you have fallen back. But you can just repent. You can come back. God will receive you. But you need to be separate from sin. You need to not act like the world. The world and the lusts, it's all coming to ruin and everyone connected with it. You need to live separate. You need to live holy. You need to live in a consecration of mind and heart and body where your life belongs to Him. teaching uh, about false teachers and we've been in the book of uh, second peter and we're going to pick it right up in second peter chapter 2 verse 18 so there's people that have given themselves over to um a sensual nature uh, a sensualness of the way they present things they appear to the lusts of the flesh so there's people that have not fully consecrated their lives and, and many of us have not fully consecrated everything in our lives, but they appeal, appeal to the sensual nature in a person, the way they say things, the way that they present things. Now it says here, for when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness. It's not a word you hear often these days, lewdness. Ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. Let's read that in the uh, Passion. This is 2 Peter 2.18 in the Passion. They spout off with their grandiose, <laughs> impressive nonsense. Consumed with the lust of the flesh, they lure back into sin. Those who recently escaped from their error. So people that have recently escaped the um, the contamination of this world and its lust and its evil can be um, prey for those that are walking and living and preaching this way. They promise others freedom, yet they themselves are slaves to corruption. Have you ever heard of preachers that have been preaching against this and for this and all about this, only to find that you know, they've been having an affair with their secretary or choir director for the last several months or years and have divorced their wife publicly and seen nothing wrong with it. Has that ever happened? I don't know. They are, for people are slaves to whatever overcomes them. So they become a slave to that thing that's overcome them. And those that hear them, they feel that they have license to walk in what they see being presented to them. So a leader who walks in sin and lasciviousness and unrestraint, I love that word lasciviousness, I'm not gonna lie, is unrestrained passion and desire that has no borders. That's my definition. Unrestrained passion and desires without borders. That's lasciviousness. So that's how they wrote people in. They make them think that this is okay, you don't have to be afraid of this because everyone has desires. Everyone has lust and passion. Don't let that restrain you. Just be all that God has made you and don't look down upon those things and the emotions that are inside. Yeah, see, this is all unrestrained. The Bible teaches very clearly to be restrained and to walk in a sanctification. That means you set apart yourself for God. You don't set apart yourself for anyone or anything else except God. So you are restrained in your emotions. You're restrained in what you see. You have borders about what you allow or don't allow. This is how you stay clean. This is how you stay pure. This is serious. And people go to hell over this. They go to hell because they believe the wrong thing. They think that they're getting by with something that God isn't even looking at. They think it's just okay. It's just great. In fact, he celebrates your human nature. No, he doesn't. 
He wants you set apart for him. He wants you sanctified and separated for his purpose. Now, verse 20. Those who escape the corrupting forces of this world system through the experience of knowing about our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Messiah, then go back into entanglement with them and are defeated by them, becoming worse off than they were to start with. So you can gain a freedom only to go back into it if you don't lock yourself into truth. This is why it's so important to gather around people that love God and love the Word of God. If you're in a group of people, in a fellowship, in a church, around people that don't love the word, that don't push like, oh, God's word and lo the love of God's word and prayer and, and a worshipful attitude and, and, and a separation for the things of God. If you're not around people like that, please find them. Do every, ask the Lord to show you where they are and, 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 and to, to direct you, to protect you, Lord. I pray that you're protected from these things. And just start to walk in some wisdom. If, if, if it looks like it's evil, it's probably evil. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, as they say, it's a duck. And you're going to be the dinner, though. It's gonna, they're going to they're gonna make, they're going to put you in a pot. The devil's going to use you and abuse you over and over again. You need to find out for yourself what the word says. Because it's what he says that matters. Don't be lured away into things that are not expressly uh, spoken of in Scripture. That are permitted, that are holy, that are good, and that are pure. Stay with that. You should all be very familiar. We're not doing it now. 2 Peter chapter 1. You should know 2 Peter chapter 1 like the back of your hand. Because this is how you're going to stay clean. Now. They go back into entanglement with them and are defeated by them, becoming worse off than they were to start with. It would have been much better for them to have experience, to never have experienced the way of righteousness than to know it and then turn away from the sacred obligation that was given to them. You, when you come to Jesus, you have a sacred obligation, which is when he called you, he separated you from the herd. But once you're separate from the herd, you're to learn to look to him for where the grass is, where the water is, where the food is, where the pan of protection is. All of the, 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 the things where your good shepherd wants to shield you, guide you and lead you into are there. Only when you look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of that faith, you may have been taken out of the world, but you need to stay out of the world. So there's a sanctification that you need to learn to walk in. There's a separation of your life that needs to be real. It needs to be, you need to be separate from the world. You need to be, look different, act different, talk different than the world. Now, verse 22. When you give yourselves over to these things and don't give yourself over to God properly, you become illustration of the true proverb. A dog will return to his own vomit and a washed pig to rolling in the mud. Some of you fell and fallen back, but you can just repent. You can come back. God will receive you, but you need to be separate from sin. You need to not act like the world. The world and the lusts, it's all coming to ruin and everyone connected with it. You need to live separate. You need to live holy. You need to live in a consecration of mind and heart and body where your life belongs to him. What he says is real to you. That's what you need to walk in. Now, <clears throat> Verse, chapter 3, verse 1. We're in 2 Peter, and we're going to read from the Passion again. Beloved friends, this is now the second letter I have written to you, in which I've attempted to stir you up and awaken you to a proper mindset. This is what we're talking about. A proper mindset that's consecrated, that's set apart for him. 
So never forget both the prophecies spoken by the holy prophets of old and the teaching of our Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. Above all, you must understand, above all, that in the last days, mockers will multiply, chasing after their evil desires. They will say, so what about this promise of his coming? Rapture of the church. Rapture is not even in the Bible. Second coming. Everything is continuing just like it always was. Our ancestors are dead and buried, yet everything is still the same as it was since from the beginning of time till now. Nothing ever changes. Yeah, tell that to the first flood victims. But they conveniently overlooked that from the beginning, the heavens and the earth were created by God's word. He spoke and the dry ground appeared, separated from the waters. Then long afterward, he destroyed that world with a tremendous flood by those very waters. And, by, and now by the same powerful wor word, the heavens and the earth are reserved for fire. Actually, th this world is going to be renovated by fire one day. Actually, the whole heaven and earth will be renovated by fire. Renovated. Made pure again. But right now, everything is being reserved and kept for that day of judgment. When all the ungodly will perish. Well, they'll, they'll perish, but that's another story. They won't, they won't not cease to exist. The ungodly, the scripture teaches, will be thrown into the lake of fire where they will be tormented day and night forever. So dear friends, we're in verse eight. Don't let this one thing escape your notice. A single day counts like a thousand years to the Lord Yahweh and a thousand years as one day. This means that contrary to man's perspective, the Lord is not late with his promise. It seems like God isn't doing anything to some people. It's like, God, you know, like, how does this thing keep going on like it is? Well, from his perspective, it's just, it's just a few seconds. It's a few minutes. From the standpoint of eternity, um, this is where our God's mindset is, is he sees, obviously, the big picture. So if you're looking at a parade, so your, your city or your, your country has this giant parade. It starts at one end to the other. Now, it may take four hours for, for all the parade floats to come through the straits and make their way and all the people along see what's in front of them as it passes by them. But your God sees it at the beginning and at the end of the parade. He sees all of it. He sees the complete layout. He sees the, the first one to the last one. So he sees it all from that perspective. He's got, he's got the literal bird's eye view from the top of the universe looking down. So don't get worked up if things seem like they're taking a long time because your God has got it together. The end is already written from the beginning. It's already worked out. So he's not late. His delay simply reveals his loving patience toward you. Because he does not want any to perish, but all to come to repentance. He's saying all these things. I'm saying all these things. So people will come to repentance and walk in repentance. If you say you've repented, the Bible says to bring forth fruits worthy of that repentance. So your repentance, in order to look like repentance, you got to show that you've stopped this and you doing this, that you actually live a life that's fruitful in repentance, that you actually live a life that's given to God and you're not walking in all kinds of crazy directions. <clears throat> because the day of the Lord will come and take everyone by surprise. Un as unexpected as a home invasion. If you're sitting there with your feet up, watching TV or reading a book in your house, and all of a sudden somebody literally kicks your door in and points weapons at you. <clears throat> surprise, surprise. As un unexpected as a home invasion, that's how the day of the Lord's gonna come. The atmosphere will be set on fire and vanish with a horrific war roar the heavenly bodies will melt away as in a tremendous blaze. The earth and every activity of man will be laid bare. Since all these things are on the verge of being dismantled, don't you see how vital it is to live a holy life? 
We must be consumed with godliness while we anticipate and help to speed up the coming of the Lord and live and demonstrate your life in such a way that you anticipate his coming. You anticipate the return of the Lord. Even if the Lord doesn't come in your lifetime, you're going to meet him sooner than later because <clears throat> it doesn't take long to get old. I remember when I was four years old, I remember things that happened when I was four years old. I'm 64 now. It doesn't take long. You see all these markers in your life and you say, wow, I remember that like it was yesterday. I remember the details of this, what I was thinking and how I was feeling. You know what? Now it's not too late. If you're still watching, if you're still breathing, give your life to God. Separate in separation to live a life that's holy and set apart for him. We're going to stop it right here. We're going to keep going and we're going to continue to finish up 2 Peter 3. And we're going to get into the book of Jude. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. you to get one of my free Bible reading plans right now. It's a free download at thrivingintheendtimes.org. There is a 365-day plan. There is a 180-day plan. There is a 90-day plan. And what makes these plans so exclusive is you read from one of three different sections of the Bible every day. So you start in Genesis, Psalms, and Matthew. You read through each section to the end of it and by the time you get to the very end of your section you're done and you've read the bible through in 90 days you've read it through in 180 days or 365 days this will make the word of god and reading it um, not a dread not a chore but something that you're excited to do where you can get the entirety of god work god's word in you right now you can do it you can start right today get your free download now is you read from...